السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بعد أن أكملنا المحاضرة الثالثة which is related to the trauma to the femur now we are going for the fourth lecture in the lower limb trauma begin with the injuries of the knee and the legs as we know the main stabilizer of the knee depending upon the ligament so the medial collateral ligament is the primary stabilizer to the valgus stress to the knee and laterally the iliotibial band and the LCL resist to virus angulation and also the anterior cruciate posterior cruciate ligaments provide anterior posterior and rotatory stability as we know each one has two bundle the ACL is AM and B Anteromedial and posterolateral band and BCL is the reverse. Acute ligamentous injury of the knee. The clinical feature begin with the history. Patient presented with history of twisting injury to the knee, painful and usually swollen knee, and in contrast to meniscal injury, the swelling appear almost immediately. Because, and usually is in him arthrosis while in the meniscal injury usually the swelling, the swelling is slowly growing and gradual in, in onset tenderness is the most and most acute over the torn ligament and stressing one or other side of the joint may producing severe pain especially on valgus or varus stress testing Partial tear usually permit no abnormal movement. It looks like stable knee, but attempt causing pain and tenderness at the intended site. Complete tear causes instability and abnormal movement. And especially, almost always is painless. Imaging for acute ligamentous injury begin with the second wife is the plain x-ray and may showing the ligament has a pulse as a small piece of the bone like in LCL injury is called second fracture the avulsion of the lateral tibia or part of the fibula is called second fracture on citrus film sometimes if painful is necessary to be done under anesthesia show whether the joint hinges open on one side the lastly is the MRI is helpful, it has high specificity and sensitivity for partial or complete tear of either MCL or LCL and standard is for ACL. Treatment of acute ligamentous injury, sprain and partial tears usually treated conservatively and RICE protocol, that we say rest and application of ice to reduce the pain and hemarthrosis, compression to reduce the swelling and early exercise, early rehabilitation, and all this done with protection in cast or splint. For at least four to six weeks, then later on, return to normal life. Complete tears, MCL tear, Usually treated conservatively in long cast for six weeks and thereafter gradual exercise are encouraged. Lateral collateral is rare and can be treated conservatively if present. ACL tear if in acute setting should be treated operatively in ACL reconstruction. BCL usually no need more than the <coughs> quadriceps strengthening exercise complication of acute ligamentous injury the most co common complication is adhesion and knee stiffness other is ossification in the ligaments especially the MCL that is we called in the proximal proximal femoral avulsion that is we called Pellegrini steel deletion and aberrant in some x-rays instability due to repeated injury that predisposed later on to arthritis and other complication is quadriceps atrophy chronic ligamentous instability 
Clinical feature usually the patient complain of giving way and the joint looks normal apart from the slight wasting of the quadriceps as I mentioned. Sometimes tenderness but excessive movement in one or more direction can be demonstrated. The gold standard for diagnosis is the MRI. Sometimes we use arthroscopy and has its indication. Number one, if the diagnosis inquiry or extent of the ligament injury remain in doubt. Number two, other lesions such as meniscal tear or cartilage damage which are suspected, especially on the, on the setting of acute ligamentous injury, sometimes associated with osteochondral injury. Type 3, or another indication, the third indication is surgical treatment if anticipated. Sometimes we call the arthroscopy is diagnostic and therapeutic. Partial meniscectomy and removal of loose cartilage tags can be performed at the same time when we do the arthroscopy. Treatment of chronic ligamentous injury. Most patients with chronic instability have reasonably good function and will not require an operation. Indication for surgery for ligamentous injury, that's we say the ACL namely, is the recurrent locking in professional athletes. That's we say, some say that repeated repeated locking or giving away more than six times per year is an indication for intervention. Intolerable symptoms of giving way. Number three, suboptimal function in sport person, as we say professional athletes or other with similarly demanding occupation. Number four, ligaments injury in adolescent, thus need early rehabilitation and return of normal function. Other subject <coughs> is the rupture of quadriceps tendon or injuries of the extensor mechanism of the knee that's including the quadriceps tendon, the patella itself and patella ligament. Some divide the injuries of the extensor mechanism according to the age. If more than 40, it's a quadriceps injury. If less than 40, it's usually patellar tendon injury. Rupture of quadriceps usually occur, as we say, more than 40, usually elderly, with one of the following risk factors, like diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, or chronic steroid use, and occasionally acute rupture may seen in young athletes, especially when there is poor training. Clinically, tearing pain and giving way of the knee, and there is bruising and local tenderness. Sometimes a gap can be felt proximal to the battle with the swelling. Active knee extension is either omitted or limited because either of pain or quadriceps injury. Sometimes the diagnosis is clinical and may be apparent on ultrasound if in query cases we can send the patient for MRI which is diagnostic more than 90% sensitivity treatment of quadriceps injury partial tear usually blaster cylinder six weeks followed by physiotherapy if complete tear we should early operation is needed or else rupture fibers will be retracted and repair later on will be difficult and need more demanding surgery and tendon transfer and more advanced procedure. Early supervised movement through the brace is important to prevent adhesion. And the repair heals over the next 12 weeks. Other important subject is the dislocation of the knee. It is very important subject because not merely on itself but it had a serious complication that related to the popliteal artery injury. It occurred in road traffic accident and the cruciate ligament and one or both lateral ligament may be torn. Clinical, clinically, rupture of the joint capsule leading to leak of hemarthrosis. So 
patient may have presented with extensive ecchymosis and swelling and duffy sensation all over around the knee. The foot must be examined because there is a risk of, as I mentioned, popliteal artery injury. So the foot is examined to both dorsospedis and the posterior tibial, capillary filling, and other is the ankle brachial pressure index. Sometimes the patient presented reduced after reduction of the knee dislocation. So extra in addition to dislocation, the films occasionally reveal the fracture of the tibial spine or posterior part of the plateau or sometimes the fracture of the patella or sometimes posterior cruciate ligament avulsion. As I mentioned, what we call the Second fracture is the avulsion of the fibular styloid. Ankle brachial pressure index should be at least 0.9 if less is the query. Arteriographies and invasive measures are nowadays little bit no used. It's replaced by CT angio, which is the standard, our gold standard. Treatment is reduction under sedation or anesthesia. And this is usually achieved by pulling directly in line of the leg. It's best to, better to avoid hyperextension because the risk of violation of the posterior vascular status. Complication of knee dislocation early is the uh, vascular injury and nerve injury, especially the common peroneal nerve because it has lengthy course. Later on, delayed complication joint instability because usually associated with the ligaments injuries or stiffness because of intraarticular fibrosis this picture showing the knee dislocation is common two type either postromedial or intromedial dislocation this is the femur lies posteriorly and this is the tibia this is the patella also, this picture showing the arteriogram, which is showing the vascular cutoff at the knee joint. It means the, there is a popliteal artery injury during dislocation. Another important subject that's part of the injury to the extensor mechanism is the fracture of the patella. As we know, the patella is the largest sesamoid bone in the body, presented in the material of the quadriceps tendon that's bearing the tendon to cross the knee joint. It facilitates the extensor mechanism. Mechanism of injury, either direct or indirect. Direct usually fall onto the knee, either in the sharp edge or the smooth edge, or blow against the dashboard that occur in the road traffic accident or indirect. That occurs typically when someone cuts the foot against a solid obstacle and to avoid falling contract the quadriceps muscle. That's we say an eccentric contraction of the quadriceps muscle. Usually cause either avulsion fracture or transverse fracture. While, while direct injuries may cause comminution, cause comminuted fracture button. Clinical feature, swelling and knee pain, bruising over the front of the knee, also tenderness and sometimes feeling a gap. Feeling a gap. If there is an effusion, aspiration may reveal the presence of blood or fat droplets, especially if associated with osteochondral fracture. X-ray, as shown in this photo. This is the common uterine fracture due to direct trauma. This is the transverse fracture. Sometimes we find a fragment separated on the superolateral surface. We should include, in, exclude the bipartite battle as an anatomical variant in comparison with the other side. And displays or minimal displays with intact extensor mechanism, conservative treatment. If common uterine fracture, we judge accordingly whether botulectomy or maintenance of the remnant botulae. 
all these has to be supplanted and put in an early rehabilitation program to prevent knee stiffness. Displays transverse fracture, usually treated by tension band wiring. Two wires surrounded by a tension band. This the benefit of this procedure is to convert to convert attraction mechanism into compression mechanism, or to convert the attraction force into compression force. During the action of the quadriceps, the traction force on two B's will convert it by this mechanism, tension bond mechanism, into compression force. So compression of the fracture size so facilitate the healing. Other subject is the dislocation of the batilla. Usually trauma traumatic dislocation that occurs due to indirect force that sudden violation of the battle to be dislocated commonly laterally. Presupposing factor is anatomical variant of genovalgum, external tibial torsion, high shallow intercondylar groove, or battle hypermobility, hyper or high riding battle, as we say, battle alte, or due to general ligamentous laxity, or local muscle weakness, or hypoplasia of the vastus medialis or hypoplasia of the lateral femoral condyle. Clinical feature, tearing sensation and feeling that the knee has gone out and may collapse due to pain and fall on the ground. Tenderness and ecomosis and the feeling of the battle out. Imaging, usually AB and lateral or special battle review, it's called skyline view, to show the battle outside the groove. Treatment is reduction, as we say, push back into the blaze, then cast, return for two to three weeks, and the patient then got undergone long period of quadriceps strengthening exercise. As shown in this picture, the bottle is out of the groove, and this is the x-ray. Complication, recurrent bottle dislocation especially after injury of the medial battle of femoral ligaments, usually treated non-operatively in the first dislocation, and the risk of recurrence is around 15 to 20%. Other very important subject of the lower limb trauma is the tibial plateau fracture, or what we call a bumper fracture. Bumper fracture. Mechanism of injury, usually virus or virgal citrus test with axial loading as these occur in bumper. This injury was classified by Schatzger into six type according to the site and displacement. Type one is the vertical split. Type two is the type one in addition to depression of the adjacent weight bearing condyle. Type three is pure depression. Type four is the middle plateau. Type 5 is biblatu fracture. Type 6 is the biblatu in addition to metaphysical extension. It's very important. Classification which guide the treatment and the future prognosis. Clinical feature, swollen knee and may be deformed. Bruising is usually extensive and tissue feel duffy because of hemarthrosis. It is a high velocity injury and should exclude the associated injury and especially the compartment syndrome. Imaging is AB lateral and oblique x-ray and sometimes the CT scan is needed because an intra-articular element. Treatment and displaced conservative treatment and displaced as we say less than two millimeter of displacement and no Articular depression. Displaced otherwise is the indication for surgery because it's a fracture of necessity, should be reduced perfectly and hold strongly for early rehabilitation to avoid knee stiffness and the problem of degenerative osteoarthrosis. This modality of fixation, either screw 
either buttressing blade or if there is an articular depression so the bone graft is put in and rafting screw multiple rafting screw to elevate the <coughs> articular surface and this is the buttress blade complication of tibial plateau fracture either early or late the most terrible early complication is the compartment syndrome especially with the advanced stage of the shot is as we say four and five considerably bleeding and swelling of the leg at the risk of compartment syndrome so this must be treated urgently if the problem of the blister swelling so all the plan of treatment should be omitted and delay until the soft tissue status permit that we say use the principle of scan span sorry span scan and the plan span as we say use the external fixation with which is spanning the knee scan we do ct scan to more delineate the geometry of the fracture and then plan plan which modality of fixation we we need until the soft tissue status permit later complication of tibial plateau fracture is the joint stiffness deformity some residual vulgus and virus which lead to overload of either compartment leading to degenerative osteoarthrosis Fracture of the tibia and fibula is common subject. As we know, the tibia is commonly to be fractured because it's subcutaneous bone. Subcutaneous bone. Usually, twisting force causes spiral fracture of both leg bones at different level. The mechanism of injury either indirect or direct. Indirect, usually low energy, spiral or long oblique fracture due to muscle action. Direct injury usually cause crushing or splitting of the skin and this is a high energy injury and most commonly cause is the road traffic accident pathological anatomy so because of the tibia is the subcutaneous bone so there is little t soft tissue around the at the fracture size so this will has a problem of the delay union and even non-union and will uh, limit the kind of fixation we use so the our treatment is depending upon the state of the soft tissue and the severity of bone injury and other is stability of the fracture Severely common with the fracture is this table and other is the degree of contamination in compound fracture. The management, our objective in the treating a tibia and fibula fracture is to limit the soft tissue damage and preserve or at least restore the skin cover, especially in compound fracture. Number two is to prevent or at least to recognize the compartment syndrome as we know it's a high risk for compartment syndrome especially if both bone fracture three is to obtain and hold fracture alignment return back to our principle is to reduce hold and rehabilitate number four is to start weight bearing early and to start joint movement as can as possible low energy fracture Usually undisplaced or minimally displaced is treated by full length cast above knee cast later on and delay weight bearing. Displaced fracture is reduced under x-ray control if alignment is near perfect. 7 degree angulation as we say rotational is absolutely zero or perfect. So the limb can be elevated kept under observation for 2-3 to three days. Then after two weeks, the position is checked back by the x-ray. Any problem, go, go for surgery. If maintained, so in full above knee cast for four to six weeks. Displaced or common fracture, treated either 
modality of fixation, either intramedulla renal, external fixation, special in compound fracture or segmental, and or the conventional blade or locked blade. Another advanced procedure is Elizaro fixation. Complication of both tibia and fibula fracture either early or late. Early vascular injury, compartment syndrome and infection and should be dealt urgently. Late complication which is common is malunion, delay union, non-union, joint stiffness especially, delayed rehabilitation, osteoporosis or osteopenia or disuse disease and other is complex regional pain syndrome or algorithm. That's all and thank you.